Legends, g'day superstars, it's Peps, and I'm here with the 2024 Mock AFL Draft, the Super Draft, as it's commonly known, which will be held later this month. You'll see that there's a lot of websites and a lot of pages out there doing a Mock Draft, but it won't be as good as ours because we're going, in the words of the almighty Tony Gregg, Horde and forced. And there's only one man I can get hard and forced with me, and it's the magnificent, rampaging Tommy Roker, all the way up there in Queensland. We are pumped to have you on board. You are the expert. You reached out to me and said, Peps, are we going to be doing it again? And I said, by G, by Jingo, by Crikey, my friend, we are getting on board. We're going to have a look at the top 23 picks of the draft. Actually, extend there to top 27 picks of the draft. We're going to go the ifs, buts, and maybe and in 60 minutes' time, we're going to cover every club in the AFL. Great to have you on board, buddy. Peps, great to be with you. Uh, it's some, uh, I, I regard this as the Gold Coast Suns' favourite time of the year because we never make the finals. But uh, there's always some interest in uh, in, in the draft in November after the trade period. And it's been a pretty big trade period and a lot of movement and a lot of things going on that um, all the action happens in the last 20 minutes in the trade week, but uh, all the, the lead up to it's pretty great. And then we have to wait for uh, everything to all sort of shake up. And then finally, the young kiddies have finished their, their schooling. And now we've only got a short wait until it actually happens. So all the info's in, all the videos have been, all the players have been interviewed. They've had their combine testing results and all the rest of it. And uh, and really, it's just what what plays out on the night. No one ever gets this perfect, but uh, nah. I reckon we've got a pretty good idea of who who goes where and and when. You're right, buddy. You're exactly right. There's been more movement, shaking, more grinding, more thriving than a P Diddy freakout party. But it's all going to be kicking off at pick one, which will be the Richmond Football Club. Now. There's a lots of different uh, people saying, but maybe who's going to be the man, who's going to be the guy? And you have told me, based on uh, your research, that'll be the awesome Sam Lawler who will be going to Richmond with their first pick in the draft. And let's be honest, they've got eight picks in the first 26, 27 picks. So they've got a bit of room to move. So it is quite exciting for them uh, as they rebuild a new dynasty after their exceptional one uh, finished pretty much last year. Oh, well, the, the Richmond faithful are, are calling you Dusty 2.0, um, which that would be lightning striking twice, wouldn't it? But um, yep. now he's got a similar size, similar way to play midfield, but yeah, they could have him uh, as a mid forward uh, to begin his career while he's developing his tank. Um, yep. He's come from way back, and that's the reason for that is he's just super consistent, plays really good footy, and... Um, out of this sort of top five or six players, they're all pretty even. I think uh, if, if you're a fan, you wouldn't mind getting any of them. Um, you can't have one of them, who we'll talk about in a minute. But, um, yeah, Sam Lovox seems like a Richmond kind of player, you know what I mean? Um, yep. There's a couple of other options that they could go down, but I, I really think that this would be the smart money. I think that is definitely going to be smart money. He's got X Factor. It's going to propel him um, across the ground. And you know what? If you're going to start off hard and forced by picking the most exciting player in the draft, rightio, we're going to jump into North Melbourne. Their first pick in the draft is pick two. It happens when you finish down the bottom of the ladder for so many years. They're going to go, you reckon, with a gentleman by the name of Finn O'Sullivan. No, you're actually going Jagger O. Smith, sorry. Jagger Smith. People have been saying well, you're gone Jagger. How come you've gone with the moves of Jagger over um, Finney or Sullivan? Well, first of all, I, I, I don't think North Melbourne will take this pick at all, but Ooh. we can't really predict. If you they I think they have to. I, I think um, the, the last few years they lost a lot of their really old good players. They've just placed a couple of old guys. Um, they do have a lot of young talent coming through, but they kind of need to look at their list in the same way that GWS does, where they go with but it's probably only going to be a B grade. And let's face it, GWS have traded out some good talent who worked out elsewhere, like Jack Steele. Um, but the point is that they keep the ones who are going to be there when they're pushing for grand finals. And uh, you, there's keeping on picking pick twos and ones and threes and all that, not going to trade back, maybe trade into the future. Well, but if they trade with 
with Richmond, and they only go back a few spots, yeah. and there's still good players there. Yeah. So that's what I think. But Jagger Smith for, for North Melbourne, um, if, if the Tigers don't pick him, because he did play VFL for them, um, yeah. that's definitely what I see for them. People might say, oh, they don't need more midfielders, but have you ever looked at your clubs list? Oh, um, it's interestingly just- enough to say that. It's interesting enough because you have a look at the clubs this year who have had really strong midfields, get a couple of injuries, and they tend to fall away a, a little bit. I know my club had their injury uh, going around having one of the best midfields for quite a while, but you only need to get two or three injuries to it, and it, it cops a big time. Collingwood had uh, a, a bad run with injuries for a while. Uh, Port had their challenges when they weren't up and firing. Um, Brisbane, even at the start of the year, had their challenges with not everyone being there, and it means that players who should be in their natural spot have to fill into other spots and it makes it uneven. So you're right. You're better off having more midfielders and have that luxury of picking and choosing who you want to play and then having those surrounding players in their right spots. So I think you're right. Look, it's either going to get Jones, uh, it's either going to go Layla, Smith or Layla. At that pointy end, it doesn't really matter who you pick. Well, if Richmond trade up, they'll, they'll take them both. Yeah, uh, they will. But I, but I do definitely think that the, the bid comes in. With, because as I said, I don't think North wants to pick two, but if they're going to trade it, it'll be after they go on the clock. Yep. And so it would have been to give them more time. They'll have yep. the trade lined up, but you're not supposed to. Uh, but they'll have offers and they'll have a good idea of what they're going to do. And, and it might even come down to who gets picked at pick one. Depends on who puts in the bid for two. Uh, exactly. Uh, if the other wants Lawler and Richmond picks Lawler, then they might be out. So, But Brisbane, we know Brisbane are going to match a bid on Levi Ashcroft. Yeah. Well, that's so about that the next one that we're going to get into because he is an absolute jet, this guy. Uh, the only player in talent league history to win three uh, consecutive premierships. Uh, yeah. he, he is a freak, and he even had a chance uh, to play for Brisbane's VFL side, had 35 and kick one. So this is a guy that he's not just going to jump in and potentially I'll play a couple of games here and there. It was The word was if he was available this year, he would have got a game in their premiership team. That's how good he is. And it's just another thing where Brisbane just, you got to look back. I know they're, they're going to lose Danaher. That's one thing that they're going to have to try and fix that. But you're getting basically a brand new player last year after Ashcroft comes back from his knee, and there was brothers jumping in, and all those players coming back from knee recos, they are in a massive sweet spot. They've just got to be able to hold it together at the right time. Yeah, look, and, and there's going to be more retirements coming years, but they're replacing them. The list management at Brisbane is just outstanding. Um, they, they've got some sneaky stuff that's going to make them better this year, um, and and they've got it. They've got a in their academy, they've got a few tall forwards, mm-hmm. and I wouldn't be surprised if they take a take a risk on maybe a couple of them, and yep. and because you've got to replace Danaher, and you can't sort of say, oh, we've got one guy in development. You've got to you've got to have a handful of them, and uh, and they've, 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 they've set themselves up so nicely. And this is the thing: Richmond don't have an incentive to bid on Ashcroft early. There's no reward in it. He's probably the best player, but. He could slide down to pick four, but he won't go past that, Peps. Why is that? Because because Biddleade is at pick four, and yep. they never let so past them. They always did. They, they, they did more than the Lambo guy on a season finale of the block. That's how often they go. Uh, so Ascross going to go there. We're going into pick five, which is Adelaide. He's saying that that they'll bid potential. I told you, horses. We, what? we didn't do pick four. We just talked about it. Oh, so who are they going to pick? Carlton had, next. Carlton have traded up, so they've traded two future picks. They and, did. I forgot about that. I forgot about their move. My, yep. I got yep. I got Ashcroft. But the, the cousin of the former number one draft pick, yep. Sam Walsh, is a young yep. fellow by the name of Finn O'Sullivan. You reckon they'll go yeah, in? Yep. I reckon that, that they see something there. If, if you want to lock in Walsh for the rest of his career, Pick his cousin. I don't think that closest, but uh, that, that remains to be seen. But uh, they, they don't need any more big buffy blokes in the middle, right? It doesn't win finals, and they've worked that out the hard way. What they need is another guy in the middle like Walsh who can get a speed, a bit of zip, 
because the game's changing, isn't it, Pep? You had yep. uh, a few years ago, it was the big boys that were getting the job done, but now it's pace and, and it's anticipation. It, it seems to be one big guy down forward and Mosquito Fleet and a, and a big centre-half forward who's got athletic capabilities to move up and down the ground. That's what they're wanting now. They want the big yeah, long ball to kick to, people at his feet, yep. and then that, that scouter pack to then r- run it forward. And if you can bring somebody in who can do that, we know Walsh has got it. Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how Carlton go without Jack Martin and no Durden there either. Um, even though Durden kicked 30 odd, apparently they didn't see much in him and he's gone off the West Coast. Once again, they know better than us. Apparently, yeah, we'll yes, see, we will see in the future. All right, probably. I players, don't they? So this was sort of in the market, but yep. they've, they're going all in on the draft. Now, Finn Sullivan, the one thing to say about him is that this time last year, he was being predicted as being the number one, not necessarily the clear number one, but injuries this year have meant that he slid slid a bit, but I don't think he's gonna, Carlton are going to go past him. Uh, he'll, he'll go there and, and, and be ready to play. Awesome. So that means that Radelaide, probably the most underperforming team in 2024. They've picked up Alex Neil Bullen in the dra- in, in the trade period. Uh, a fit Rankin as well, too. Hopefully their forward line issues start to work themselves out because they've got the capabilities to go forward. You're looking at this saying that they're going to probably pick up Sid Draper. Uh, homegrown South Australian talent, loves his work in the sandful, um, and they reckon he's really ready for senior footy. Exactly what Adelaide need at this particular moment in time. Um, his low centre of gravity is apparently out of this world, uh, which is something that they've already got a number of low to ground players, Rankin, Rochelle, et cetera. Having a third one in there is just going to make it a little bit more difficult for our back lines uh, across the league. And and let's not forget with the gather round these days, the, the Crows and Port get 13 games in Adelaide. So they're, they're yet again, they've got, and what they haven't done a whole lot of, they, they do do it, is when they buy it, when they get the, the local boys in, they've got a pl- 200 player. They try to bring players home like they did with Rankin, but this is just a golden opportunity to get someone who is, through the year, he's been touted as a possible number one. Yeah, uh, It's been a good campaign for him. And uh, if, if someone doesn't surprise everyone and pick him earlier, um, I don't think they can really go past him. Um, as I said, you, you want those homegrown kids, they'll stay. They're, they're not going to go anywhere. Exactly right. Now, uh, a couple of comments coming in. There's a bit of love for you on the chat already for you, uh, Tommy. Uh, Jamie wants to know, uh, are the suns still shit? He also wants to know, is Tommy in Bali? Uh, because if your internet is a bit choppy. Uh, but there's a lot of love coming through because of uh, the awesomeness that you're providing at the moment too. So... If you're liking what you're seeing, everyone, we'd love you to hit that long subscribe button and be part of the show every single week. We're going to be coming back in a few weeks once the draft is done as well to sort of see who won that and um, who didn't. But more importantly, it means that you're ready for 2025 and your preseason's already beginning. So preseason also began for this team as well today, the Melbourne Football Club. My boys, they had a shock in 2020. We all know about what happened off the field and probably what happened on the field as well. There's a lot of talk yeah. going around. You've got someone down here by the name of Harvey Langford. That seems to be the um, consensus that if he's available at pick six, there's also a bit of Josh Smilly action as well too. But everything that I've read, I like a bit of Harvey Langford. He's a big beast. He's massive. Um, he's going to be in that midfield. Melbourne's midfield Still very, very good, but they need to inject some youth into it. They did that a bit with Trent Livers last year. This guy can make an immediate impact. He's uh, he's not a small bloke either, by the way, 191 centimetres, which is small for midfielders these days, if you know what I mean. Um, and he has got versatility, a great kick as well too, exactly what Melbourne need, uh, can move forward if need be. So I reckon he's just going to be exactly what Melbourne want, and if it's not him, it'll be Miley or Smilly. Either of those two are going to be a win. Either of those two are going to be a win. And it's basically whoever Melbourne picks, Richmond will pick the opposite. I think think you've got that exact one there. It it is such an even draft. This first five are probably going to be the first five in some order. But Langford's no slouch. Um, And and I really think that that the Demons just, they because you've got to think three or four years in advance. So who's still going to be there and who's still going to be running the engine room? 
And so um, they might all still be there, but you once midfield has sort of hit 30, you sort of want to rotate them a bit more. So getting getting young back in there, and they don't need him right away, but it would be nice to have a top-rated midfield rookie yep. if you do lose a Petrarca for half a season, which you're not going to do again. But that was a horrible for the Ds, and they are right in this draft with, and they're going to get a couple of really classy players. So exactly, right. I'm, I'd be excited by him. I, you know, we've got here that uh, Smilly will probably go to Richmond if it's going to be the Flipsy, and it's the same sort of thing too. They've, they just reckon that he is AFL ready, and this is what I think Richmond are going to be aiming for: players that can make an immediate impact on the field. They don't have to be dominating games, but they can just throw out of their eight that they've got available, that eight picks that they've got. If they can put five of these kids straight into games, that's going to get that build. And these guys are going to come through together, and, and Smilly could be a big one. He's a tall inside midfielder, very damaging at the stoppages as well too, and um, does generate scoring shots, which Richmond didn't do a lot of last year, and they're going to want to be seeing a lot more, depending on who their forward craft is going to be, because Lynch is unfortunately still down there, and uh, LaFowle's uh, out with his knee. So they kind of still find it a bit challenging, and is Kaczynski going to be able to step up, which I don't think many people think he can. Maybe because he put 2.0 needs to just uh, accept his fate and down the back line. And yep. if he can't get games, then uh, he'll be a VFL hero. Not that Richmond's VFL program's shabby. They, they, they produce a lot of good footy out there. That, those guys who could go play Bush League and make 2000 bucks a week, they take 200 bucks a week at Richmond VFL just in the hope that someone's going to look at them at draft. Um, and so it would be a good place for him to cut his teeth. You wouldn't expect a 195-centimetre 18-year-old midfielder to really make five in his first couple of seasons. W wasn't too much. I guess the Bont is probably well, the one that really mm. uh, of that. So You'd probably go Crips would be the other one as well too. The post the the Wild, they're the best three big-bodied mids. Um, and they kind of gone out of fashion a little bit, but, you don't, but why? This guy's going to be huge. He's going to kick goals. Um, and so I'd expect him to, to, to go there if he isn't taken earlier because he's another one who was sort of predicted maybe top three. I know very early in the year he was top one or at least one power ranking. So yep. there are, he's got a lot of fans. So we'll see what the, what the experts think on draft night. Beautiful. Awesome. Well, Al, it was in the 1990s where you had that beautiful ad with the making you smiley talking about the ski double up. If you remember what the ski double up was, it was the ski yogurt with the fruit that you folded over. Well, in 2024, the St Kilda Football Club, they've got their own version of the ski double up, which is picks eight and pick nine in the draft. And based on your theory, my friend, you are looking at uh, Murphy Reed to be going at pick eight and Bo Allen coming in at number nine. Bo Allen, that's a football name if I've ever heard one as well too. Um, right. He is well, speed and he's a WA boy, so there is a bit of a flight risk, homesickness. That's the only – I know it sounds strange, but that's the only thing that I'd be thinking about potentially. But that's mm -hmm. Bo Allen. But tell us a bit about Murphy Reed. Why have you gone with Murphy Reed uh, at number eight? Because there's some cracking names to follow on, and this one sort of jumped out at me a bit. Yeah, yeah. Murphy Reed's uh, uh, – it's, it's two – it's, it's two AFL names, isn't it? And, of course, with Reed going last year, in the, I think there's been quite a few Reeds of their spellings the last few seasons have gone in the first round. Uh, he's from Sandringham, and Sandringham are interesting because they've won three years in a row. And I, I say this because there's one major caveat that I have about Sandringham players in this draft because what if only one or two of them is really elite? and the others have just benefited. So what if their system is great, but they're not actually going to churn out 10 champions? This looks like they're going to get at least half a dozen picks. So they've got Ashcroft early. Murphy Reed seems to be the, the next best from there. There's a couple of names in, in that we're going to read out tonight that are all from Sandringham. And I think they're good, but that's the one caveat that I would have is Murphy Reed. He looks like a top 10 player, but um, maybe if he's had Levi Ashcroft feeding him the pill every week. Pretty yep, it could be. Look, I played in three uh, cricket grand final victories in a row in under-14s and under-16s, and look, we had some absolute crack and top-end talent. But I, I know that the ones who sat just a little bit underneath us 
Uh, they definitely held up. They may not have been Rolls Royces, but they were no Datsun 120 wise, if you know what I mean. They could still play. And that's the way I look at it with these kids. You've got your, your Bugattis, your Ashcrofts and these type of guys, but you don't get a game playing for Coates if you haven't got some sort of talent and you don't get rated this high if you haven't got some sort of talent too. So you've got to get the ball in your hands and you're going to have to use it. And obviously, uh, Alan and Reed are two that St Kilda will definitely have their eyes on uh, because they were looking pretty good in the back half of last year. Things started to click for them really nicely, caused a few upsets, uh, but they just need a little bit more of that class around the ball to, to complement what they've got because that midfield in a couple of areas is, is getting older in a couple of areas. How much longer can Steel go for? Uh, but they have got Wayne Malera running through the middle. Sinclair, these type of guys, how long can they be at their peak? So they've got to get this type of talent in and get it right because the last time that they did it was a number of years ago and it really didn't work out for them. So hopefully they'll be able to nail the, the double up. All right, pick 10. Well, we know that. Well, oh, sorry. Just before, just before we go into the pick 10, Peps, Bo Allen, we need to talk about this kid because – he might be a reach, but he's what the kill need, right? They need a couple of mids and he's some defender. Frio, and he's a, he's a black duck, so Frio and, and, uh, and the Eagles would love to have him, but they just don't pick anywhere near high enough. I don't think he's going to no. glide out to that far. However, if, if St. Kilda wants to go in a... In, in the direction of picking a, a, another Sandringham player, because, of course, Sandringham's their sort of junior feeder, and they actually have committed to picking a Sandringham zebra every year. So in the rookie draft, they'll be coming up. So there's a bit of a theme there. And they got Ben King from Sandringham, and even though he had a bugged knee, um, and I reckon they probably got the wrong King. But I'm happy about that. But Carl well, Allen, a, mid a midfield can play in defence, so, and he's, he's got a bit of medium defender about him. Um, but I think he's probably too classy to keep down there. And he'll be one of those guys who, who, um, who gets up in the midfield a bit later in his career. Um, but that's that St Kilda option here, the nuclear option, which is to take a, a trade and get back a bit further and split the pick. Um, someone like Sydney might do that, or Bidney. Um, if he said their two first-round picks to St Kilda, that's good news for St Kilda. They, they get a couple of picks that are still in the first round, but that means they get three first rounders and instead of just the two. I think St Kilda need to take the best. I know it's an extra kid, but you're going to get a gun and they really need, the only way that I reckon St Kilda split a pick is if there's someone in the first, in the first eight picks that hasn't gone, that they've got their eye on, then they might consider it. But outside of that, if everybody has been ticked off their board up until this moment, Take the best that's available because if there's one thing about drafting, and you've seen this, if you try to get a little bit too creative, it ends up biting you on the ass. And they've been bitten on the ass way too many times over the years. Play, yeah. just look at the Australian cricket team, Tommy. They're playing ramp shots, they're trying to freaking cut, reverse, sweat, stuff that shit, mate. Play the V, right? Get yourself sealed in, and you're going to be setting yourself up for success. That's what St Kilda need to do because I'll tell you what. If they mess this up for a club that's won one flag in their entire history, I don't know how much longer they're going to be hoping for. they got to nail it, and you go with the best, especially you're not going to get two become, picks in the top ten all that often. They might end up becoming the, uh, the Darwin Saints. Oh, you never know. It could be. Um, i tell you what, though. I like a bit of chocolate. I like a bit of cacao. But we're not talking cacao, we're talking cacao because Essendon, they're going to match a bid apparently for Isaac Cacao, uh, who yeah. down here in Melbourne has had a lot of talk about him. He is a speed freak. He is just an absolute gun, a small forward, exactly what Essendon need. They need somebody who can kick goals because they are just relying too much on Langford. And string is gone, so they're going to have to somebody pick up the pick up the mantle. And he looks like he potentially is going to be um, the one who can do that. So, well, look, the, the comparisons are coming in thick and fast. Now he's a, he looks a bit like Ryan Myers. Yep. Um, he's only 175 centimeters, but some of the best small forwards are that size, um, yep. and so they, they they won't mind that. And how lucky are uh, Essendon, or rather. You, you think that they must have been one of the ones pushing the most for it, but 
the NGA restriction is, is has been lifted now, so they oh, can't don't start me on that, Tommy. We're well, we're in shout out and Mac Andrew being stolen from us. All right, well, you're we're out of the boy from the Suns next year anyway, so we'll we'll see if oh, that's still- all right. But yeah, but. You've got Mac Andrew, who's, what, the highest-paid player in the league now? Like, that's our, that's We wouldn't have been able to afford him. We don't have the AFL's help that much. All righty. Now, you're going to say that the Ds at pick 11 are going for a guy by the name of Harry Armstrong. Yep, yep. Now, so, the thing is, is that you're saying another, another forward for Melbourne that they're going to be going for. I thought that they might yeah. have gone for someone like maybe an Alex uh, Taru to maybe feel in that back line side of things because May's getting a little bit older. He won't have too much petrol left in the tank. They've got to eventually fill him, but you're saying that they're just going to go for an, another potential key forward, which will be their third key forward in four drafts. Well, it's just it, though. You kind of, it takes you five or six years to figure out whether you've got a, a real full forward. Um, some of the experiments that Goody's been having have worked out in the short term, but not the long term. Yeah. You know, big, big Tom McDonald was back in the day when Melbourne was just streeting the field with you know Tommy McDonald playing on a wing sometimes, and they had all these tall forwards and everything was turning to gold. Well, yeah. Ben Brown, sort of the, the vegan diet, got to him in the end. I think. Um, don't care. So, he got a flag. He got. He got us a flag. Yeah. So I don't, I don't care if Mister Mister Vegan, Mister. <laughs> Mister, I, I don't eat meat. I don't care. I wouldn't eat meat for the rest of my life if it made another flag. Oh, so. It could probably become a university job. one day. But I, I, I just think a, a, a nice big bodied goal scoring forward would be just what the D's are looking for. And that's why I've gone with him because the flying Viking, someone in the in the top 10 picks him because he's he's talented. Yeah. Um, I guess that little, and we, we tend to focus too much on height, but some someone of that size, I think he's 193 from from memory, um, and maybe he's still growing, and maybe maybe he's not going to be a key defender, maybe he's going to be a rebounding defender who just happens to have a bit of height. So you're quite right, Melbourne would love him, and they'd be kind of slow, probably, he wouldn't play 23 games, I wouldn't have thought, but you'd, you'd love to have him in there with those mentors around him just to teach him how to read the play and adjust to the speed of the game. And uh, you expect Stephen May to start putting in a few. He'll, he'll play out his contract, but he's not going to play until he's 40. So I think you're right, though. If, if he comes in, it might push Petty, might, might, it might push Petty back. Uh, yeah. But then you've got Van Roy and Jefferson, potentially Armstrong, and Jefferson, Van Roy and... Armstrong and Kentfield, like your four options when it gives the opportunity for one of those to go back to. So that's right. So moving on to your Gold Coast Suns, this is quite a simple one. Just another one out of your Gold Coast Academy, Leo Lombard. Sounds like a UFC fighter. He is a VFL Premiership player at the age of 16. He's just a play. He's just a, a freak, takes charge, beautiful ball mover, lots of strength, but can hit the scoreboard as well too. Just another one of those ones that we're going to sit back probably in a couple of years and go Gold Coast again. Yeah, he's, he's 2.0. Uh, I'm not just saying that because of the colour of his skin. Uh, there is a resemblance to the way they look and they play. Um, they've got that um, African heritage, and and uh, it's like the you know, the, the Ali or Ali or back Andrew type thing. It's 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 a sub centimetre kind of dash. Miller um, goes overseas every year. Uh, and does work on on his fitness and his speed. This year he's gone away and got married, so he's he's oh, that's it. his career. Lee Matthews used to say, uh, "No sex in the preseason," uh, because if if you want to have uh, plans of playing finals, uh, you can't be sitting by your wife's bedside when she's given birth. So, Tuke's got a job to do. Leo's going to have to step in, <laughs> and that's a great succession plan. There, he'll probably play as a small forward. Um, there's no chance of him going anywhere else. There is a chance of him getting bid on earlier. He might yep. slide a bit further. But I, I've sort of predicted this is about his mark, and I think uh, a lot of the experts are sort of, um, you know, agree with, about that. Clubs don't really like to see the Gold Coast get yet another academy player. But guess what, Peps? There's five Gold Coast academy players who just got selected in the AFL academy. Yes, uh, we know. 20- we know, we know about, we know it's going up there in Gold Coast, and I'm not just talking about the price of parking and ice creams as well, too. Right, we go back on the Richmond. Richmond have got another pick here. Um, they've gone for the bid with Teru. They didn't get him. We know that just was a tactic. And you're all saying that they're going to go with the big flying, the flying, what are they called? Flying, the flying what? The flying Russian? The flying... Flying, 
flying Viking. Uh, and we spoke about him a moment ago, Alex Taru. So he is just a, a beast. It's funny, he's 193, but they, I think the thing about him is he, he just likes to crash packs. So if you're in his yeah. way, uh, good luck. Um, because if you don't know what size boot he wears, you'll probably find out very, very closely because you'll be able to count it by the number of stops that you'll have in his back or when he puts it through the back of your head. Yeah, yeah, no. And, and I mean, it's because we just gotten started with the first two picks. Now they have two picks in a row um, and, then, and, then, and then four more. And who knows what they do, Richmond? I mean, like I said earlier, they've only seven players on their, on their seed list. Mm. You have to have 36. So they have to get nine players. Um, they may upgrade a rookie or two. I reckon so, they'll get a couple yeah. in the SSP and the preseason, that sort of stuff too. Yeah, they've got a, they might have rookies to the senior list to get up to thirty six. But if if a club comes in and they say, "Rightio, Richmond, pick fourteen. Uh, we really want Taj Hotton, and we think mm. you're going to pick. You don't want him that bad. We'll give you our future first round pick and pick twenty eight, or something like that, which is way overs. But if they really want him. They'll, they'll, they'll come in. So my prediction is that Richmond are going to entertain offers right up to the live draft. And we're going to, at some stage, we're going to see something like that happen where they they really land a great and the other club's going to think they've won because they get the player that they want. Yep. Because it's it's worth mentioning that we can speculate all we like on these players. Every club has time staff who are fucking around with a, excuse my French, but they, they've got a, a board of players who, who go up and down and up and down. They've got yeah. their needs and they all put it in there. Now, Richmond, only Richmond know what, and if they think maybe the, the draft at this stage is midfield heavy um, and, they, and there's only midfielders available, ship the pick back, trade into the future, get a couple of later picks uh, because they need so many players on their list. A pick forty or a pick fifty isn't actually going to be a bad thing for them, really. And they don't have um, any. And the, and the good thing is, if they, like you said, you, it looks around. They've got two picks in a row. If they go with Taj Hotton, that's one of those players that you know he's coming back off. We're picking him up at number fourteen. He's coming yeah. back off an ACL, so he might not even like get his gears going until through the year. Like they might just say, you know, for this entire year, you get a game, great. Just get back on the park, get your confidence. There is no rush for you to play, my friend. Even though he'll say, I have, but he's just going to be one of those guys that they can look back and go, well, you know what? He's he's fast. He's quick. His ball uh, 50 is elite. His goal, skill, goal kicking and goal scoring capabilities are exactly what Richmond need, but we just don't need it now because we can only and fit 23 on the park at one time. Just enjoy yeah. your spot. Enjoy your rehab. Take your time. We're not in dire straits. There's only nine of you joining us this year. This could actually be a smart pick if they do pick him. Get the best available, unavailable talent, if you know what I mean. Yes, I do. Well, the, the, remember the caveat, the San, he's a Sandringham kid. Mm -hmm. And so it could just be that he's just been in a great system with some great players and going into a, let's face it, if Richmond win a game next year, it will be because they've nailed this draft. Yeah. But they're not going to run a full. No, but um, I think. And they're not the bottom. True. And I think, but the, what I like about this guy is, is that because he's he's only, he's not even six foot. And so he has to get his own ball because he's not going to be taking, he's not going to be taking hangers. He has to yep. be at the people's feet and he has to be creative. So regardless if the ball's coming in or he's, he's, he's making a lot of the magic himself. So. Yep. By the way, lots of love coming from you, Mickey Burnside said, "More French, please, Roka." Tommy, Mickey Burnside takes the best foot takes the best photos of local football. Get on his website, uh, his Facebook page. He is takes an absolute corkers. He's one of the best I've seen, uh, and he wants a bit more, uh, a bit more uh, menage à trois of the uh, Roka. Um, Peps and Tommy Roka giving you the 2024 AFL lace out muck draft. First round. Rightio, let's get into page two, which is the West Coast Eagles. First pick for West Coast. They've uh, they've, they've basically, like, they gave away their first ball, um, Baker. So this is their first pick in the draft, even though they did finish quite low. And um, we're not. it's not Megan Trainer that we're looking at. We're looking at Luke Trainer, Another Sandringham Dragon was predicted to go quite high in the draft. For a long time of the year, but unfortunately, the old concussions have uh, struck this poor fella down, and he unfortunately dropped in in people's eyes. So it's look, it's still going to be a big risk if West Coast have, have 
going for a guy this high, for them to confidently say that he's over his concussion troubles, that in my eyes, that is a big risk because they are rebuilding. They can't afford to mess this up. There's still a lot of quality on the board. The guy can play, but if he's got head issues, something that we didn't think we'd be thinking about a long time ago, now it's you know prominent. Well, look, you've earned a pick one and, and through no fault of their own because he was a consensus choice and, yep. you know, Sydney managed him back on the field. But I, I, I get the feeling, I'm not going to harp on this, but I get the feeling that sooner or later somebody gets in the ear of these young men and if it's the right of advice, they come and look you know, down the toilet if you keep playing football. And the and the other kind is like, oh, it's just a neck problem, mate. You'll be fine, you know. And and so you lay in the concussions, and then they keep cycling through advice until finally the the message hits home. Um, it is a it is a bloody big worry. Um, but he's a key defender, so he's he's going to get in. He gets he's going to be the way football's played these days. He'll be the one who'll be putting knees into backs, not the other way around in the, in the defensive. You know, the days of no, but the days of forwards taking big big marks every single week not there anymore um no. so i think i'd rather be in his position playing you know uh, a, a defensive mechanism where be able to control my destiny um he just doesn't want to be the one he would hate to be sitting underneath a, a high ball coming in and just waiting because that is that is concussion city uh for him yeah yeah and you're right there's a lot on this code if one of the top guys that we've we've, we've projected slides there then uh, you know that that they'll snap the, the bpa call you made before it starts to become more relevant now if there's a slider yeah but we're now getting into weeds a little bit because the players who are yet to come they're, they're good players but there's a reason why they're not top 10 prospects yeah yep. uh, and 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 of course that into the, the first round a lot of teams to play finals exactly so right. there's 12 clubs with picks in this first round that goes up to fifteen when you when you can see that we've we've looked at, yep. and then that goes out to seventeen if clubs start to trade in. So you know, if someone gave West Coast a, if they couldn't refuse to move back a little bit for a future first rounder. Yep. Um, yep. And a, and a club, a club, you know, who would we Hawthorne might do that now? Hawthorne yep. with a, with a top six a tough draw, they could slide back out to 10th or 12th, would someone like West Coast entertain a future pick off? Although, sorry, it is Carlton's future pick that Hawthorne have yep. got, so gambling on Carlton. And uh, Geelong's another one. Is it going to be the Geelong of, of um, 2023 or yep. the Geelong of – we don't know. Each year they seem to go up and down recently. So uh, trading their future first, it could be pick 18 or it could be pick five. So, so there's it's worth worth mentioning, and not say it for every pick um, from here on in. Anything could happen. Yeah, with with, uh, with 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 trading. I'm going to whip through a couple of these really, really quickly because we've got final uh, there first uh, shot at the title. Uh, you've gone sorry, Port Adelaide's first shot at the title at 16. We finally get a guy with a basketball background. And we're talking about uh, Alex Dodson here in, in the mould of Pendlebury. How long is it going to take for someone to come up with basketball background just like Pendlebury in his first game? So Port Adelaide are going to go with him. Uh, Port Adelaide need a lot of work, even though their supporters probably don't think so. I'm not too buoyant on Port Adelaide. You just have to have a look at the way that they finished last year. Uh, and if their midfield like, don't fire up. They, and J-Dog knows it. In Kenny we trust, uh, J-Dog. In Kenny we trust. Like, subscribe and ring the bell. They need a young local boy, just like Adelaide. And uh, it's probably a bit of a reach to predict Dodson here, but um, he's come from nowhere. He yep. played, played played basketball this year. He only just started his footy again and um, and do just dominated. And uh, best fucking the job. So the, neither, neither the court or the have have any picks after this. Uh, that'll be in his range, and if they don't pick, if Port don't get him, um, who knows what they, they might go for? Like Joe Berry. Yes, yeah, that's come from the chat. Craigie yeah. Jones reckons that they'll go for they, Port. Don't need another ruck. They'll take Joe Berry. That yeah, in my eyes, yeah. that means that Port Adelaide will take Dodson, just because it's Port Adelaide. There's nothing yeah, funnier than when the Port yeah. Adelaide supporters rant and rave. I love it. Do you follow Flag Mantle on Facebook? 
flag yeah, mantle. Yeah, flag mantle boys. Yeah, know them very well. And yep. They're, 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 they're just like, oh, when get Joe Barry, he's going to go earlier. But I, I thought I'd put this in for them because, uh, well, uh, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll see a happy purple power people, not purple power, purple rain people, and, and all those guys will be pretty stoked if they get their, their wish there. So, yeah, that, that'll play out. If Dodson slides, he could be sliding a fair way. Yeah, so it's either now and well, Alex Berry's – well, Joe Berry is going to be going to um, – he'd have to be – his nickname would have to be Straubs, wouldn't it? Straubs. Straubs will be going to Fantle, which is – they don't need another Rackman because they've got Jackson. They've got Darcy. Why they'd pick him up, I've got no idea. So <laughs> fuck me if I know why they do it, but it's Fremantle, and they're just going to – the only the only reason they pop is to potentially maybe offload Darcy at another time. That. That's the only way that I look at it because they're spending a buck load of cash on Rackman and they're going to pick up another one according to your outlay here. So we had the ski, we had the Liz Smiley double up. Now we've got the uh, the Woodies, otherwise known as the Greater Western Sydney. Yeah, they've got their double up at numbers 18 and 19. You're going with Xavier Lindsay at 18 yeah. and then um, Harry Oliver at yeah. 19 for them. I think these, these kids, are, are, are they're very... Very GWS. So GWS have been losing a few players year on, and and they they just lost some hack and and uh, and midfield talent. So to add to their their, their midfield uh, coming and kind of gone. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, just got one guy, the Strog, and and uh, and they've had a lot of talent walk out the door. So they're going to need an Alex. Um, so yeah, I, I like I like Lindsay. Uh, at, at this spot and Harry Oliver defender small defender I just like him and it might be a bit of a reach but he's another Sandringham boy so we just we just don't know he just seems like a nice replacement for for the, the halfbacks that they've lost um, and and their defense is very very good so um, you know be a three you pick him you play him in the VFL and if he's up to the the stand because I mean there's a, a lot of you know, and yep. uh, you know, a few injuries or retirements, um, you know, they've, they've got the next year. up. They're one of the best recruiting clubs because they've been given heaven and everyone's like your club, so don't you start. But the thing I also Not like about the thing also like about Lindsay as well, apparently the smartest player in the draft, but also very hard running as well. And if you look at the way that GWS play, how they slingshot off halfback, they are a running machine. They run both ways. He would fit in nicely and, you know, if everything goes right, um, but slot in nice and early off the bench and be a nice um, nice little pickup to just take a bit of prof off the midfielders. Because, you know, Whitfield's not getting any uh, – not getting any. Toby Green started to show a bit of, you know, um, wear and tear. He's, he's Flaywood. Uh, Canelio a little bit as well too. Tom Green needs some help in the middle. This guy might be someone who can definitely help out because I think they've got both ends worked out really well. It's that midfield streaming, and, and if he can, if he can also use the ball really well, once again, that's why I don't think GWS, even though they've lost a couple, they're still going to be in that window as well. So especially after what Hogan did last year, which I'm still very, very jealous about. All right, let's go to the Western Bulldogs. First pick number twenty. Uh, you've gone with someone by the name of Toby Trevelia who sounds like a beautiful dish that you can buy at uh, any Italian restaurant. Uh, he sounds al dente. Uh, this is based on the pick that they got out of the Mega Trade with Geelong for Bailey Smith. So big uh, double T, FM, as I'm going to uh, call him. There's been a lot of chatter about him uh, throughout the, the draft. Where is he going to be? I've just noticed it's a bit of a slider. From from on, on on your list based on uh, a number of others, but you're you're quite happy with that with that spot. Yeah, I mean, uh, only because the before uh, seemed to have good defences and, and pretty pretty solid yep. depth there. You know. So uh, being a being a, a smallish defender, um, he he can play small, he can play tall. So that's you know you need in every every team of those guys because you just you can't really just choose weak on your position you've got to have someone who's a bit of a inspector gadget and that's what this guy can be he can he, he can go go gadget arms place tall 87 centimeters which is a nice size for a footballer he's not going to be too punk but he's going to have the reach um and and um he's he's just pure intercept all day um so so yeah i i, I think he think problem can be out of defense and he could be the long-term solution 
Um, yeah. A lot of games, they get out to a lead and then the other team starts kicking behinds and, and the dogs just so often they, they, they just start conceding, conceding, conceding because yeah. um, they're, they're, they're just stuffing around, get trying to get it out of the back line. Um, so they need someone like him to just rebound all day. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's be honest. You had Atkins brothers, you had Danny DeVito, you had Arnie, you had the Bella twins. Like they, they are just the awesome like twins lineups that you have throughout history, throughout life. The yeah. War brothers, exactly. But we're talking about twins here. We're talking about twins, you know, cut from the beautiful yeah. of the same day. Uh, the, the Ben, Ben King and uh, Max King, the, the Bon Kings, yeah. all right? Same person until they played against each other this yes. year. They were a strong chance of both going to the same club in this exactly. draft. Well, that's what I was about to say because I'm, I'm going to hold off on Sydney's pick 22, but 21 and 23, you've got the Whitlocks, Matt Whitlock and Jeff yeah. Whitlock, both are 200 yeah. centimetres, both from the Murray Bush Rangers. Uh, why wouldn't you, if you could possibly get two brothers to go to the same club at that height, you can't it's the, go it's wrong. The, it's, oh. the, it's the bromance. It's the, it's the, the bromance. Dream to have twins go to the same place. Oh, yep. so many people say, oh, St Kilda are going to get Ben King. Ben and Max King in the forward line would be a disaster. No, no. no Max it's King in any forward line looks like it's going to be a disaster because he, he's, he's, his body's as um, good old Bruce back in the 80s. Gary Elderman and Bruce Reed. Exactly. Best, get the sticky tape out. Couldn't get both of them on the field at the same time. Because one of the Whitlocks is a bit like Ben King. He's the defender turned turned key forward. Um, so you actually have the bookends. Which is Jack, yep. And so I've got three teams slated for this. Western City could make the reach and, yep. and select them in consecutive picks, which they would love. But I, I, I think West Greater Western Sydney have probably got enough tall talent and they don't even need one. Um, and Sydney is the other one who, if Richmond go for this other fellow who's a Judd Shanahan who kicked yeah. 11 goals in three VFL games, if you don't mind, the Bombs. Can uh, play. So there's three key forwards in a row here uh, in, the, in, in this sort of part of the draft that all conceivably go around here and there's three possibilities that they could be picked because greater west and sydney have another pick uh, and sydney have another pick and richmond have another pick so it's uh yeah three three possibilities for the brothers going to the club in, in fact richmond has so many bites at the cherry that if the if the other twin you know 20 20 27 or still i still can so it's on it's on Go on We'll, we'll see. We'll take the other one. And it's really good, too, because you mentioned him in a moment ago, but we, we skipped 22 deliberately because we wanted to cover off the Twins. You mentioned Shanahan earlier on. Uh, great little cameo for a number of games there in the VFL. Uh, a massive unit, 195 centimetres. Um, strong work ethic, strong in the contest, great hands, but can have a bit of um, a bit of a tank as well, too. So it's interestingly, interestingly um, he seems to be, you know, based on what, what you're with, and just having a look throughout the list, some people have picked him. Uh, you know, you and Big Footy are very similar in the way that you've sort of positioned him, where SEN have picked him to go at 11. So he's either going to go early or he's going to be a slider, depending on what clubs like or dislike, who do they think they want to go with. But he could be an absolute bargain or an absolute steal, depending on where he goes in the draft, which is, which you know, for Sydney... They've got forwards, but we saw what happened in their finals. Just because they're key doesn't mean it's always going to be able to unlock victory. Yeah, exactly. And the, the one thing I'll say about him is that Essendon loved him. Yep. And Essendon's plan is to match the bid on Kako and yep. then potentially trade back in to the first round. And I could see selling, you know, selling their future, unlike Sydney or Richmond, to, to, to get him. Well, um, I think this is not someone who they need to go for. Because they, they need life after Langford and definitely life after Peter Wright. And and he looks like if he's still on the board and they can get up the up the draft, yeah, definitely. And you know how you were talking about earlier on? If North yeah. Melbourne decide to split picks just in case they want to maybe get another one, they might mm. split it. And if they get one around this mark, Essendon might target that one to move up to get him if he's still available. So you're right. Well, There's so many things that happen on the night 
that do affect yeah. how things eventuate later on. And we need to sort of keep that in mind. It's going to be fascinating, fascinating stuff. Rightio. We've got picks left and we've got four minutes to do them. So we're going to whip through these really quickly. Cooper Hines is going at 24, according to yourself as well. 190. It's a lot of 190 plus of notices that we've been going through the stats. Is you know, gone to the days where 180 Collingwood six footers. These are genuine six foot, six foot three, six foot four types. Now we're talking yeah. big units, a uh, mid forward, uh, explosive out of the stoppage apparently. And well, could you imagine this guy and Tom Green just going at it all day? It'd be a nightmare for any midfield. All those hormones in the chicken, all just getting bigger, and yeah. uh, the, all the girls are going on OnlyFans. Anyway, yeah. could, the, the, we're getting into the the back of the the first round here, where literally. I could have picked from 30 players because yep. the top 50 this year is pretty strong. No matter and that's what makes it a super draft, isn't it? Like we're, yeah. we're pick 20, and if we go through the last three in, in, in quick succession, they're all still like gun kids. It doesn't yeah. normally go this deep, and you've still got names that we haven't even spoken about, like father, sons, et cetera, which we'll, which we'll whip through really quickly at the back end as well too. But, um, yeah, uh, I, I think that they're going to set him just in there. Then you have Sydney going with someone like a Jesse Dottoli. And I was just talking about everybody's over 190. Well, this guy's the 179. These are the guys that I like to see who are literally my height who can get a game because I started to feel, I don't know about you, but the little fella is coming back into play. And yeah. this guy's crafty. He loves it down forward. Can kick goals and gets on the gets on the gets on the um gets on the sneak. And he's going to be a backman's nightmare. And I think Western Bulldogs. If you have him and Waitman, and also West, who I thought was I don't know why he was left out of the finals this year. Yeah, that's a Bevo special. They need that to go with Hagen Norton. Darcy. Sydney, 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 uh, Sydney. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm, I don't even know why. Do you know why? Because on my list here, it says he's going with the Western Bulldogs. And that's why I started going with the Western Bulldogs. So, yep, yeah, uh, Sydney um, need him. Sydney need him because yeah. they're putrid. All right. Yeah. Brisbane. So, uh, so I think that Sam, the young Sandringham player, but he's tied to the Brisbane Academy because he's from, from Queensland. Um, I think he's going to get a bid weightier than this. But I put him out here just get a bit of clear air and, and not have so much speculation. Um, it'll happen at some point, yep. um, and and, um, and and then Brisbane's um, out out of the hat, but they could trade back in. Um, and, and, and then, uh, but last but not least, we Jonty Fall. What a name, Jonty, Jonty Fall. Jonty Fall, one is. of the greatest cricketers ever to play in uh, Jonty Rhodes. What a, he was the best. He was the so, best point, point fielder in history. Anyway, this is this will be a really Richmondy kind of pick because he's from Ballarat, and uh, and they love their boys from from northwestern Victoria. It's probably the yeah. only part of the country that they're not going to be picking someone from because they're picking yeah, well, them from everywhere else. Be big. Well, it's very Victorian heavy, very Victorian heavy. Here will be uh, non Victorians all over the place. Two thirds yeah. of the. First round of Victoria awesome. next year. And that's 27 picks that we've got. I told you we'd get through 27 picks in less than an hour. And things that we haven't included are things like uh, Father Sunbids, um, so the Camparellis, uh, the Chapmans, the Burgoynes, uh, Montgomery's, uh, Noah Uze. None of these names have been mentioned. We deliberately left those ones out because they'll eventually either come on board or they won't. Like that's pretty simple how that yeah. going to work. The big dark horse from the, from the Crows, his old man kicked a, a, a bunch of goals. Oh, Scotty um, Welsh, what a he, shuffles, love shuffles. And his Tyler Welsh has been outstanding. He yeah. just maybe wasn't quite as good as last year. Yeah. And, and no one predicted him to go high, but it wouldn't surprise me if he was, had a bit at the end of the first round. Awesome. Wouldn't and then you've got, and then like we mentioned uh, a little bit earlier, we're probably going to maybe get their way back into the first round. We're talking about Brisbane, Gold Coast, Essendon. Uh, they're going to either match bids, use their points to get back in there. It's it's just going to be an exciting, I think the exciting thing out of this one is, is that every club in the first 20 to 25, could even go to 30, have got a really good chance of picking up a really good kid. And I know that there's nuggets later on in the draft, but after probably five, six in recent years, it's dropped off. I don't think it's been this deep for quite a long time. And, and, and everybody, everybody wins. That's the well, way we kind of mucked things around for junior players. And each year since then, the more footy we've had, you know, it seems, seems a bit um, The COVID year was unpredictable. And then, 
since then there's just not, not been as much um you know continuity you can't watch tape on, on one player but now now you can um and and um and and it, it'll deep draft peps so we're probably talking maybe 60 picks yeah, 68 more. picks, 68 picks, I reckon. There's, there's going to be quite a few. I'm looking forward to it. I am really looking to it. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, and the people in uh, South Australia, that is Lace Out's 2024 Mock Draft Round 1 with the great rampaging Tom Roker, special guest host, all the way from Bali, according to Jamie Wallace tonight. But, yeah, so, hey, tell us, are we right? Are we wrong? Leave a comment share it with anybody leave a like i said give us a like if you like it but i reckon that uh tommy's nailed his predictions this year and it'll be interesting to come back once the draft has gone live to look at what were we right about but also what did we have no idea about and what were some of the uh, classics to come out of it hopefully tommy will be back in the country and he won't be staggering like he's doing the max hedrum uh as he's had for most of the night so tommy you're an absolute superstar i'm your host Christopher Pepper will be back later on in a couple of weeks' time with a trade, sorry, a draft recap. We'll also have a couple of little videos coming through over the next couple of weeks. We have been a bit quiet over the last number of weeks, but that's okay. It's because, you know, we needed a bit. Of, we had COVID. Things happen. But uh, more importantly, uh, thank you for everyone tuning in live, but also if you're watching this now, thank you very much because it's Lace Out. It's how you want your footy. And uh, Mr. Rokup, I know you've been hanging to say these magic phrase because it has been our mock draft. Mr. Tom Roker, the rampaging Tom Roker, all the way up there in uh, the QLD. How do you want your footy? And if you want to throw an expletive in there, Mickey Burnside would love it. I don't know if you can split lace and out, but lace fucking out. Yes. Take care, viewers. Enjoy. <laughs>